right, we've never had this guest on before. First time guest. Peter Burns of the SEC Network. Before I bring you on, Shannon, Ryan did something he's never done with me before. What's up? He sent me a text during the break that says, I really want to say something to Peter. Oh, good. So uh, what do you think that is? I don't know. He's got probably one good question I'll tell you what, we'll we'll save it for the end. Okay. Peter, it's uh, nice to have you on. Uh, it's nice to have you on. I, I feel honored in the fact that I've had you on my show like 97 times that I finally get the invite. Like I was waiting for you to send down the rose to me, and I appreciate the uh, I appreciate the vine, as Jim Rome would say. We and don't by the have way, guests. Going back to Mark Davis, I don't want I don't want money. I want weird ass money. Like <laughs> Davis has weird ass money where that's you can true. do the bowl cut for 400 miles away. Like I, that's where I don't care type money. That's the type of money I want to have in my pocket one day. That's a good point. Like when you just don't care what people think. Just so you know, Peter, we don't ever have guests. Like we, I, with the exception of like Cal and Stoops, we've probably had one guest in six months. Like we just don't do guests. But, <laughs> but, uh, but we've got you, and I got you because you tweeted out this morning that you thought the top ten best jobs in college football, and you had number ten was Kentucky. Now I understand your reasoning, but I wanted you to give your reasoning because I think it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I was looking at it, and I'm kind of thinking about what place is right now, right? you got to have a good fan base, which obviously Big Blue Nation is. you got to have good facilities, which, you know, I was there at SEC Network when we toured them, and Flax gave us the whole, you know, great, uh, you know, look into it, and they're as good as anybody uh, that's going right now. You have to have a AD that has a plan, that has patience, that believes in the football product. you got that in Mitch Barnhart. you got to have a great city. And Lexington is, and this is painful for me to say, Matt, as a kid that born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, who grew up hating everything Wildcat related because Rex Chapman used to just, you know, rip my heart out like Temple of Doom, you know, Indiana Jones as a kid. <laughs> um, and again, like, and I, I think you have to have a fan base that's hungry, that also has, you know, fair expectations, but will celebrate good times. And you got a hell of a coach in Mark Stoops. Like, what, what else do you need? to have a good, solid program? Because I guarantee you there's a lot of them that people think they have a great program. No, they don't. Not at all. All right, so I I, I, I would say the best point is actually your last one, that our fans have reasonable expectations, meaning you can win seven or eight and we don't want to fire you. I think the counter would be that even though we've started this pipeline with Ohio, recruiting is a little harder here because this state doesn't produce as many players as Georgia – Mississippi, Louisiana, Florida. What, what do you think of that? Yeah, I mean, I think that's fair. But then, guess what? You can say that about Nebraska. You say that about other programs that are like, oh, well, you know, they can't get the recruits there because of where they're at. Well, guess what? Stoops has done it, and it's kind of like a, you know, what's the first thing you walk into a, either Kentucky's facility or any big football facility around a good football program? When you walk in, you're going to see how many players are in the NFL. I don't care how big or small the pipeline is. They're going to tell how many guys are playing on Sunday. And when I see Stoops at the draft and I see more and more guys like Wondell Robinson going, man, bro, I can play anywhere. I'm that good, but I love this, what's brewing down here, and that mentality, that's why guys are going there. I had Will Levis on my show yesterday. I mean, the, the guy reminds me of this, you know, kind of Joe Burrow swagger. Like, I could go to places, and this was the place I want to go. And he wants to be an NFL quarterback. Like, that's saying something. And I think that's one of the reasons why I had that as one of my top ten, you know, programs or, or fits in all of college football. Yeah, Kentucky's got a lot more. I saw that the opening day NFL rosters, Kentucky had fifteen guys on it. I bet that's never been true. Ryan, you think that's ever been true in our history before? That no we've way. Had fifteen no. guys on an NFL roster. No, I bet, sometimes I, we're lucky to have two or three yeah, on opening day roster. I, I, I bet we have it. You're, you're all around the SEC, Peter. I'm always yeah. interested in this because other coaches know really what's going on. Do other coaches in the SEC, how much has their respect risen for Kentucky? There's zero doubt because, I mean, I you know, going back a couple of years and probably even maybe in, in Stoops' first year or two or even before that, Kentucky was looked at as like, all right, fans aren't going to get kind of crazy. We know what we're going to get. It's a little gimmicky. We're okay. And then now they know they're going to be, no matter, even if they win or lose a game, they're going to feel like crap afterwards, right? Because it's kind of like they're going to beat you down, and it is not fun to play a, a Stoops team, especially over the last couple of years. And I think where they have an appreciation is not only on how Stoops has built this team around that his own mentality, that blue-collar mentality, but I think every, there's a lot 
and maybe Nick Saban's not one of them because of what he has in Greg Byrne, but so many of them are jealous in the relationship they have that, that Mark has with Mitch Barnhart of thinking, hey, you know what? I, I trust you. You're building it. What do you need? I'm here to help you provide and get that. Because they're that, that's the biggest disconnect. I mean, why has Texas been so bad for the longest time? Why is Southern cows? Because there's a disconnect, and that's not what I see in Lexington. That's why it's a great gig. Do you? How good do you think? I know you work sometimes with Chris Doring, who's been a big Kentucky supporter, well, not supporter, but Kentucky advocate for the last few years. How good do you yeah. think this team can be? I mean, we look at the schedule. We say, hey, they could win nine, ten. 11? Like, how, what do you think is the, is the likely result for Kentucky? Third best team in the SEC, and that's saying something considering you got the two best teams in probably college football right now in Georgia and, and Alabama, right? I mean, that, that, that's where you, this, the ceiling is for this team. Do I think they're with Alabama? Hell, Matt, I don't think anybody's with Bama, right? It's just, and, I, and I don't want it to be that way. It's just when I look at it going, God dang, again, they're that good. Yes. Georgia just has a different level. And when you're putting those, that many NFL guys in there and it's just five star after five star, the, the Jimmys and Joes are there. But after seeing what I saw at Texas A&M, I mean, you know, they struggled. They don't have the offensive line that Kentucky has. When I see what I saw out of Florida, I've got some concerns with, with what they've got cooking. Why can't Kentucky be the third best team? And, and listen, you catch Georgia at the right place, right time. Remember a couple of years ago, Georgia had a great team. And oh, by the way, they went into Williams Bryce Stadium in South Carolina, which was not great. They were fell asleep in the wheel. Three interceptions later from Israel McQuamu, they end up upsetting Georgia. So, I mean, that's a hell of a place to be right now. And uh, it's because Stoops can grow and think about, you know, adding Levis, adding Wandell, adding Liam. I mean, that's, that's what you need to adapt, and he's done it. Yeah, he has. All right, so Shannon, is Ryan going to embarrass us with what he's what he wants? I mean, I've never, probably so. But in in yeah. ten years of doing this show, I've never had Ryan Lemon say, "I want to say something to this person." He oh, didn't. God. By the way, he didn't That's say, great. "I want to." He didn't say, "I want to ask a question." He said, "I want to say mm. something." Mm. So okay. I, I, I'm he has a big him, smile on his face. I'm going to let him say whatever he wants to say. I have a guess is what he's going to say. I'm like worried that I knocked somebody up on a trip to Lexington at some point. <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow. Well, I'm like really goodness. worried about this. All right, so Ryan, go ahead. All right, Peter. Not a question, just a, a personal thing. I want to say to you: when your daughter was born about three years ago or so, you put out on social media that it was the first time in your life that you would ever met somebody with your own bloodlines because you were adopted. Yep. I'm the father of three adopted boys, and we're all in the same club. And I just want to say, you know, thank you. When you did that, you know, it, it touched me, and I'm sure it touched a lot of people because adoption is involved in a lot of our lives. So thank you for saying that, and you've been in my club ever since. Ooh, man, I'm, I'm, oof, I'm like I said, that, that, that could have gone a whole different direction. <laughs> it could have. It could have. Be <laughs> man, it, it, it's a blessing, right? I think about that all the time about, you know, I, you know my biological mom was 15 when she had me, and the, the, the tough choice she could have made and – and man, she said, you know what, I'm going to give you up. And, um, and I came into a great family and my, you know, my mom's Cuban, my dad's Cajun, my, my brother was half Brazilian, my sister's South Korean. We're like the United Nations of the SEC. Like we're crazy. And, um, and, you know, so the, that's right. You know, my, my daughter was born. It'll, she'll be four on Halloween. And when I held her in my arms, that was the first time I've ever met anybody in my life that I was related to. And it's, uh, yeah, man, I, I get goosebumps just talking about it. I'm a pretty damn blessed man. That's a great story, and that's a great comment by Ryan. And, Peter, I think you passed your first test here on KSR. Let's go. Now Let's you just go. Yeah, we, get, we right. have him back. Let's you just go. got to get him to put us on there. We've been like, what do we have to do? Like, we're the most <laughs> popular show in the country for a local sports thing. The SEC Network, they got to put us on even once a week. Bro, I'm not putting you on because then I'd be out of a job. You're no, you're like 19 it. times more talented no, than me. Well, no, I mean, I just our whole group. We, we would we yeah. would we would entertain. It. But anyway, hey Peter, thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Boys, y'all have a good one and uh, enjoy this ride with Stoops right now. It's fun as hell.